Hello, my darlings, and welcome to a new episode of After Dark Fairy Tales. I have a new one for you all, and the title of this one is called Drink, Die, Rain. And this wonderful tale was written by a very gifted author named L.B. Rinker. L.B. shared his story, and I'm very honored that he wanted me to narrate it. It was very well written, and I enjoyed it. I hope you all will as well. Um, to all my new subscribers, I want to say welcome to After Dark Fairy Tales, and thank you for joining the After Dark family. I'm going to thank all of you for your likes and your comments and your support. I'm glad you all are here, and uh, I'm glad you all are enjoying my narration, and most importantly, the stories. Uh, I know that some of you could be doing anything else, but instead you're here, and enjoying these wonderful tales that I'm able to share with you all. Um, so, I'm going to get right into LB's story, and uh, I posted the link to LB's Ritzy page below in the description box where you can check out his other stories as well. They're pretty good, just like this one. And uh, I hope I can bring this one to life it's through verbal form the best way I can. And uh, all of you let me know what you think about it in the comments below. I enjoyed it, but I know everyone has different opinions. Um, since Elby's story is kind of a Western fantasy, I was going to throw in a little Southern accent. Hope it doesn't sound too silly, but uh, I'll try to make it as cowboyish as I can. <laughs> Are you guys ready to find out what Drink Die Rain is all about? Well... Here we go. Drink, Die, Rain by L.B. Rinker My lips were cracking, burning as I laid there in the hot sand in the middle of town. My head rested against the steps to the saloon. The plan had been to get something to drink. I prayed for water, but would have settled for whiskey. They didn't have either. It had rained for months. The whole area was bone dry. Even the reserves were tapped out. My horse, Delilah, who had already succumbed to dehydration, baked in the sun just a few feet away. She was starting to stink. I tried swatting the flies away from her, but there were dozens, and I was too weak to keep it up. Some of the little bastards crawled across her dry, vacant eyes, and I could feel my stomach starting to turn. I used every bit of energy I had to crawl up the steps and back into the saloon. I had to get away from that smell. The rapidly rotting corpse, and hers, wasn't the only one. The whole town reeked of mortality. The bar was dead quiet aside from the creaking of the old floorboards as I crawled around looking for something, anything to quench my dying man's thirst. Hell, I reckon I would have drank perfume if I'd found any. I would have guzzled down my own piss if I could have squeezed out another drop. But that was one and done. Nah, I figured I'd die there on that old dusty floor, all alone. Maybe I should have left with the rest of them, looking for something they'd probably never find. They were all just gambling with their lives the way I saw it. Half of them were probably baking like poor Delilah. The other half might have been luckier. But if that was going to be my last breath, I wasn't holding it. I must have been delirious because I heard the piano come to life on the other side of the saloon. I just laughed. I thought it'd be trumpets I'd be hearing, but St. Peter was playing piano for old Johnny Green. It was a familiar tune, maybe a hymnal. If my throat wasn't so dry, I'd have sang along, but I just laid there waiting to see that bright light I'd heard so much about. Hell, in that moment, I welcomed it. I prayed for that bright light. 
I shut my eyes, ready to drift off to sleep. For the last time, I thought. The place went quiet again, and I laid there, imagining what them pearly gates were going to be like, and all my family there, waiting. What a way to go. After a lifetime of fighting and running down outlaws, it was going to be thirst that got me. It could have been worse, though. At least it was peaceful. I was sure I'd lost it, because right then, the door swung open, and in walked a woman. She had long brown hair that matched her eyes, a beautiful dark complexion, and symbols marked across her face in blue paint. She was wearing a dress made out of deer hide, and around her neck hung a small glass bottle filled with sparkling blue liquid. She unfastened a canteen from her hip and kneeled down beside me. She took off the lid, pressed the canteen to my lips, and poured in that ice-cold, life-saving water. We stayed there like that for a minute, and she kept pouring like a mother feeding her newborn. I could feel my strength returning, so she helped me to my feet, walked me over to the bar, and sat me down on an old rickety stool. God bless you, I told her, my own voice almost surprising me. She just smiled, replaced the top to the canteen, and started shaking it. I could hear water splashing around inside it, but I was sure I'd polished it off. She opened it back up, held it out to me, and asked, More? I took the canteen from her, looked inside it, and sure enough, it was full again. I couldn't wrap my head around it, but I didn't question it. I just choked it all down again. I felt rejuvenated, full of energy, full of life. How the hell did you do that? I finally asked her. She just smiled again and put the canteen back on her hip. Better? She asked. Yes, ma'am, much better, I said as I stood up from the stool and stretched out my aching joints. The fog of delusion that had been clouding my mind lifted and I knew for sure that she was real and the bottle around her neck caught my attention once more. What do you got there in that bottle? I asked her. Rain, she responded. Rain? What do you mean rain? Like rain water? I asked her. Rain, she said again, motioning with her hands like she was trying to explain the concept. Well, I don't know where you're from, but it ain't rained around here for a long time, I told her. She took the bottle from around her neck and dangled it to me by its thin gold chain. You want me to take it? I asked her. She nodded. I took the blue liquid from her and admired it. It was more beautiful up close, like a sapphire. What do you want me to do with it? I asked her. Sacrifice, she responded, pointing at my chest. Sacrifice? Sacrifice what? I asked again, puzzled. Sacrifice, she said again, this time poking her finger into my chest. Drink, die, rain, she said. I thought over her words for a moment, in confusion before responding. If I drink this, I'll die, I asked. She nodded with a slight frown. And that'll make it rain somehow? I asked her again. She nodded with a smile. We stood in silence as I considered her ridiculous preposition. I had always been a religious man, but not superstitious. There's no way what she was telling me could be true. But if she was to be believed, if sacrificing myself would somehow end that drought and save countless lives, then I had to at least try. 
If it didn't work, then at least I'd have the strength to keep on looking. All right, I told her. I'll sacrifice myself. She smiled and clapped her hands together, cheering for my decision. <laughs> I uncorked the bottle with my teeth and spit the cork onto the ground. I'm coming, Delilah, I said as I pressed the bottle to my lips and drank. Again, the water was ice cold. I felt it run down my throat and then an icy grip wrapped around my heart, stealing away my strength once again. I finished off the bottle and went to hand it back to the woman, but she was gone. I looked around the bar in confusion before hearing the most beautiful sound, thunder clapping. I walked to the door in excitement, each step tougher than the last. I collapsed as I made my way out of the saloon and struggled back down the steps to lay with my horse there in that hot sand. And then it started pouring rain. I smiled a big toothy grin up at that stormy sky and through them cold black clouds I could see it, that bright light I heard so much about. Well, did y'all like that one? <laughs> I hope you did. I tried to do the southern accent, but I hope it didn't distract from the story. I figured it was a western, so I hope hope you guys liked it. But I want to give all credit to LB, and I want to thank him for sharing his wonderful tale. That was a bit haunting and uh, very well written. So all credit goes to LB, and uh, please check out his other stories because I posted it in the description box. Just click on that link and check out the rest of his work. And uh, I'll be back next time with another After Dark Fairy Tales. And I sure hope you guys enjoyed that one and my narration. But I tried to bring it to life. So, all credit to LP and Drink Die Rain. And uh, I'll be back again with another one. And I want to once again thank all of you for listening and enjoying the stories. And I want to thank the authors, the wonderful, talented writers for sharing their stories with me. And wanted me to narrate them to you all. And so I'll be back again. And until next time, good night, my darlings. <laughs>